I had breast cancer in February of 2009 and December of 2009, the very same year, uh, right near Christmas time. We're, uh, I'm a teacher, and we were going on um, winter break, and that's when I um, got. I actually developed pneumonia, and I was just I was a mess. So you know, Dennis took me to the hospital, and um, that's when we discovered it. And I was I couldn't believe it. To be honest, I thought I was going to die. Um, I just couldn't breathe. They um, they did all kinds of procedures uh, with my lungs and everything, and I just said, how can this be? You know, after going through chemotherapy, radiation, they removed the tumor. I'm like, oh, you got to be kidding. And then, you know, they told me, and it was, I was very dejected, very dejected. My biggest symptom I had is uh, shortness of breath. Fortunately for me, thank God, it doesn't happen all the time. But I do have episodes every once in a while, and I really have to just slow down. Um, also, it's impacted my ability to go to work with, and, and be with my students. It's, a, it's impacted my ability to just have the spunk that I used to have, to be with grandma and run around with my eight grandchildren. Um, it, just, it definitely slows me down in a big way that I'm not happy with. Anita uh, basically has a cardiomyopathy. That means uh, the cardiac muscle uh, is weak and doesn't pump as well. And so as a result of this cardiomyopathy, which she developed, her heart function had been declining over the course of several weeks to months, uh, actually a couple of years. Uh, and uh, over this period of time, she also started noticing that she was feeling a little more winded and uh, not up to speed. And obviously, uh, we had to set things right. So she received uh, optimal medical therapy, which you know includes an array of medications to help strengthen the heart function. And uh, after having gone through that for several months, uh, we found that her heart function actually continued to decline or at least move in the wrong, dire wrong direction. Uh, so when she approached us, uh, we felt that she was a candidate for having a defibrillator implanted uh, because a defibrillator, we know, protects patients from... Uh, uh, life-threatening arrhythmia, so she was clearly a candidate for that. Uh, but what she was not a candidate for was any clear strategy to help mechanically or electrically improve her heart function. Vagal nerve uh, stimulation therapy has been used for a number of years to treat primarily epilepsy. And it's been found that somewhere between a third to a half of epilepsy patients can have a significant reduction in their frequency of their seizures using vagal nerve stimulation. In the current case, we're using it to treat people with congestive heart failure. So it's a somewhat different device. And it's placed intentionally on the right side, which has more fibers that go to the heart. And in the goal of the stimulation is to be able to slow down the heart rate, which uh, can sometimes be an extra stress on the heart itself and worsen the uh, heart failure. So in this case, it's, there's a vagal nerve stimulator placed on the right vagus nerve in conjunction with a sensing lead that's put in the heart itself. A week after her surgery, she'll come in for just a post-op check to make sure her sight is healing nicely. At three weeks, we will actually activate the device. The device needs time to heal within its pocket, and then uh, at the three-week mark, we will go ahead and begin stimulation. At that point, she will receive regular phone calls to ensure that she's doing well clinically, and then she'll be visiting us on a monthly basis for some time, and then those visits will spread out to every three months. But all in all, she'll be followed for approximately five and a half years, with regular visits in which we make sure that she is getting clinical improvement and that the device is working appropriately and that there have not been any issues with safety. We're just, you know, very optimistic. You know, they've been very honest with me. They've told me the numbers, but they're all in my favor. And, you know, I just, uh, seriously, I just, uh, I'm so fortunate. I call Amanda the nurse that's in the program. I call Dr. Singh and I call Dr. Parks. Those are my three blessings, I call them. I just am so excited to be able to think even of a future with my grandkids and just, you know, I think about them down the line, their weddings and, 
you know, spending wonderful quality time with them and where I didn't even have any confidence to even think like that before.